All right, so I wanted to do an initial review for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. That's a game, right? Frontiers of Pandora. Let me say here. Yeah, I'm right. Okay. Old lady brain put away. Anyway, yes, this game. Oh my gosh. Mmm. If I could describe this game in one phrase, it would be a visual symphony unlike anything I've ever experienced in an open world game. This game is just brimming with atmosphere and and immersion and like oh my gosh like the way you collect resources you walk up to a plant and it says well you have a higher chance of getting a you know like a superior or you know exquisite version of this branch or this piece of food if you just wait till it rains or maybe you wait for it to be dark and I'm like ah uh, okay Unfortunately, like it does rain in this game, but you spend like four or five hours in this game just hunting and doing side quests and <laughs> it's like you're waiting for it to rain so you can go get that branch, right? <laughs> but this game is just like it makes you care about the way you collect things and when you're even when you're hunting, like you can't just go off and kill like 12 deer like creatures and there not be consequences for that right because you have to stay within the balance of of the world around you right you can't just do whatever you want i mean you can but you can't there will be consequences to just like bur butchering every animal around you and it does make sense for the lore of of this world that you're you're existing in. Uh, the attention to detail and uh, the way they incorporate things like crafting and cooking, like you need to make sure that like you pay close attention to you know your your hunger bar because it will affect you in the open world like you need to make sure that you're cooking things for yourself and you can throw just about any two things together and get you a scrumptious dinner to go and uh, I, I love the way your character like sings to themselves when they're cooking that's so cute it's just the moments of detail I love it like I love it <laughs> And every side quest feels like its own big adventure. Because they'll send you off into like, I don't know, you get a side quest here. And it'll send you like somewhere over here. And you got to go there. And like you don't know what you're going to run into on the way over there. And it's so cool. Now, of course, naturally, you can see that I haven't really uncovered a whole lot of the map. And that's just because... I'm trying to contain my area that I'm, I'm still getting my groove lined out in, right? I don't want to get in over my head, so to speak. So I have learned tons about crafting and uh, how to engage with the open world and how to engage with the people around me. Simply just through this little area right here, there's no reason to like hurry. There's no reason. This game doesn't beg to be rushed through. It begs to be savored. And you just can't help it. Like everywhere you go, every new biome you you go into, you're just like you think you know the world and then you go into a brand new biome and it's like something like just blows it blows your mind all over again. And again, look at this map. Look at this map. I know among these clouds, this game is getting ready to blow my mind over and over and over again. How does it perform on a PS5? Really good. Uh, except for, I think I've had like in the 
10 or 12 hours that I've played. Uh, I've had uh, one crash in single player mode. I've had two crashes, two or three crashes in co-op. So what is there to say about co-op? Co-op is, um, well, I will say this much. It doesn't feel like um, what it, it's competitive, right? Not cooperative. So if uh, certain items your partner loots, you don't get to loot those items yourself. Now, certain crates you will, depending on what loot's in there. But if you're out hunting together and one of you bring down an animal, only one of you can take resources from that animal. If uh, you're out foraging, only one of you is going to be able to take that egg from the nest. Only one of you is going to be able to pick this particular fruit off of that particular tree. It, it makes sense. It does. It makes sense. It can, it can be a little like, oh, man, you know. You know, a lot of times you'd be like, ah, oh, come pick this. And the next tree, let, you know, I'll pick the next tree. So, I mean, there, there's some of that in there. But the co-op is pretty tight. Like, Little Mama didn't have any trouble keeping up. She didn't have in, any trouble keeping up. She, like, it never feels like she's out of sync with the action that's going on. So, she's she's experiencing the game as, as it should be. And I would expect nothing less from Ubisoft's, you know... A session sharing, I guess you could call it. They're just very good at that. They always have been. So, yeah, co-op's pretty tight. There are some issues. They need to line those out. They're very minor. You will experience some screen tearing on occasion. Uh, maybe some, some pop-ins a little bit here and there. But it's, it's not so frequent that it really pulls you out of the experience. It really doesn't. The way the sound design weaves itself into the open world is so exquisite. Like it creates this thick, heavy, immersive experience. Jumping and running is so damn, it feels so good. Using your weapon feels good. Like, bow hunting, like, in this game is so much fun. And when you're shooting enemies with your bow, you feel very powerful. You really do. Like, your your bow is so powerful. And it's fantastic. You get other things, too. You get, like, this thing where you can sling explosives. So, like, if you have, like, mech, mech soldiers and you sling, like, something. If you, if you aim it just right, like, you can bring a mech soldier down like snap of fingers you do get guns in this game uh, but they don't feel nearly as good as a bow they <laughs> really don't I prefer the bow <laughs> I prefer the bow all the way but yeah so far this game has been a super solid experience this open world takes your favorite open world game and it slams it against the lockers and slaps it around until that open world game gives this open world game lunch money. Okay, this, this game is so great. Now, the other thing I want to bring up, like people are saying that this game is just simply Far Cry 7. No. No. I get I get where they're coming from because it is a Ubisoft game and it does like Ubisoft's got their fingerprints all over like the game everything right down to the store but this game has got way too much in it like again like the way you gather resources the way you hunt uh, like it's like this experience doesn't it it doesn't feel like Far Cry. It may be, may be a little bit of Far Cry Primal. Maybe. But when you add in like the, the way you craft, uh, the craft and stuff. 
the way you uh, deck out your, your weapons, the way you hunt, the way you track things. It feels like there was a lot of games that inspired this game. A lot of games. This is this is not just another Far Cry game. There are there are some uh, early rumblings of people that are griping about how colonialism plays a huge part in the game story. Yeah, yeah, it does. But. I know that that is the foundation that some people are going to be laying to just write this game off. It's just, oh, it's just warp trash. You got a bunch of androgynous humans walking around and something, something, colonialism. This game's trash. Don't play it. Just stop, okay? Just, just stop for a second and stop fucking bitching about everything for a second, okay? If you look at movies and video games only to look for woke trash in it, then you will see it, sure. But that don't make you any better than someone on the opposite end of this big stinky turd. It don't make you any better than the person on the opposite end that looks for racism and social injustice in every piece of media they come across. You have become no different than them. You're just on the opposite end of this big stinky fucking turd. So stop it. <laughs> this game is not woke trash. It's not Far Cry 7. It's an open world game that doesn't strive to be the best open world game it can be. It excels at it. So, I highly recommend that you put this game on your watch list or just outright buy it. Because this game is awesome. It doesn't matter. On the PlayStation 5, this game rocks. And I think that this is one of the first games I've ever played on the PS5 console where I've really said, or said to myself, this game is really showing us what, well, what to me, next gen, right? It's current gen, but this is, this is what, th this is what the current gen is all about. Show us what this hardware can do. And I think that Frontiers of Pandora is showing us exactly what this hardware can really do. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I don't feel like there's any way a game like this could ever hope to run on a PS4 or an Xbox One, right? This is the game that shows us what the current gen hardware that we bought that claimed it was next gen when it came out. This game is really showing us what, what it can do, right? Like, it's so, like, it's just, this is great. So anyway... I've been playing this in solo and I've been playing it co-op with Little Mama. Again, these are my initial thoughts and this game is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It kind of starts out a little slow and I got a little frustrated with it until the game really opened up and showed me what it was really all about. I got, uh, I started getting like a frustrated with like how slow it started out as. <sighs> and then it opened up and I was like, all right, now we're rocking and rolling. Yeah, this is the game I, I wanted it to be. And it, it's it just, this game just blows my mind around every freaking corner. Every corner, man. It's just like, this game is oh, awesome. It is a visual symphony like no other. It really is. Like, the way you interact with the open world is just, like, freaking crazy. Oh, my gosh, it's crazy. This game is awesome. I haven't even got to fly on anything yet. I haven't even got my little animal yet. That's going to fly me up in them them little the floating rock thingies. I haven't even gotten that yet. 
Not even yet. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Because, uh, yeah, like, this is awesome. I can't wait to where I can interact with animals, you know? And I can just ride them around. This game feels like Far Cry Primal. This game's got some... Horizon Forbidden West going on. It's got some Dragon Age Inquisition going on with it. It's got some Red Dead Redemption 2 going on with it. This game has got a lot of inspiration in it. But mostly, this game is not just another open world game. This game, again, is a visual symphony. And it will blow your mind if you give it a chance. So if you get this game, take your time with it. All right, don't try to go rushing through it because the more you try to rush your way through it, the harder it's going to get on you. But yeah, this this game is exquisite, man. Oh my gosh. Good grief, man. Ugh. This game is so gorgeous, it makes me want to vomit. The combat the exploration, the resource gathering. Like, this game has got it all. If you don't want to pay $70 for it, that's fine. But don't let people tell you this game is not worth playing. And then gives you a bunch of stupid reasons why you shouldn't play it. Because you are going to be missing out on a fantastic experience. Alright, again, these are my initial thoughts, but... After almost 15 hours or so, these are these are my initial thoughts. Okay, I feel I feel like about you know 10, 12 hours is, is good enough to, to offer my initial thoughts about how this game performs and whether or not it's you know a good purchase on a PlayStation 5. Oh yeah, oh oh yeah, oh my gosh, yes, woo. I love jumping. I'm a jumper. Boop, 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 boop. I love this. Like, this is like, this game is so smooth. Dang. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Great game. Great game. I know you, like, usually, like, negative videos get more attention than, like, positive videos anymore. Uh, but I'm not here for views. I'm here to be honest. This game rocks. It really does. For a Ubisoft game, like, this game makes other open world games look like trash. Utter, utter trash. <laughs> it really does. It's wild. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my thoughts. You all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. And I will catch you on the flip side.